strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Start with kind of a system that everybody knows, tailor to yourself and go. How do we make this not suck, right? How do we make this so that like we are getting strong, we're getting strong with our scales and our scales are helping us play every piece of music that we could possibly want to play and learn it fast and learn it well. That's what practicing scales is gonna do for us. We know we're supposed to practice our scales, but how do we do it? Hello and welcome to Clarinet Ninja. Close A, it's a great book. We, there's a lot of it. The only thing I've ever been assigned by a teacher is the scale pages, uh, but there are also some, some great duets in the back, but it's, it's a complete method for learning the clarinet. Uh, but I've never seen anybody actually use it for that purpose uh, in most of the pages that are involved in it. So keep that in mind, it's there, it's great. We only work on this one page. If you wanna buy the book, link in the description. If you don't wanna buy the book, just Google Close A Scales. There's some free, free PDFs all over the world. Grab one of those. And here's what you're gonna find. The second book that is kind of the Bible or the Torah or the Quran, whatever religion you are, of Clarinet Scales is called The Bearman. Bearman is also a complete set of books. There's three of them. You want the third one for the scales. Now this is a complete, really thorough version of scales. The third book that I used is called the Gaston Hamelin book. And it's got some real, they write the scales out differently. We're gonna get into why that's important in a second. The fourth book that I used was, strangely enough, entitled Patterns for Jazz. I, w I wanted to be a jazz player. I'll reveal that to you if you don't already know. That's what I, that's, that was my passion when I was a kid. It's not anymore. Still love jazz, but it's not what I do. But I did learn a lot from the books, and I'm going to show you how I did. Uh, and then the last book, I think it's called Daily Studies for the Clarinet. Uh, there are a bunch of Joe Allard studies. Now, this book wasn't written when I was learning scales, but I did this thing when I was learning scales. In any of these books, here are the things to think about. What Are we playing full range or are we playing from root to root? Right? Are we going from like on a C scale from C up to C and back down? The alternative would be the full range of the instrument or perhaps maybe just to a certain note, maybe one note above the root or the tonic. If you don't know these words, that's okay. Um, this video is not about explaining it. Just stick with me. It'll all make sense by the time we get through it. Let's go through the close A first. And also let me just say, we're talking about the scales, not the scales and exercises. The exercises are a whole other thing. There's the scales. There's the scales and thirds. There's different ways that the scale gets organized. There's arpeggios. There's all sorts of different exercises to do. We're not really talking about those today. We will, not today. All right, so just in terms of the scales, I'm gonna play a little bit of the close A. Let's check out how it sounds. And it goes through what's called the circle of fourths, the circle of fifths, all the way through that. So here are the things to pay attention to. That's going from root, through one root, up to another root, two, two octaves. Sometimes it leaps up a little bit to connect the scales in a certain way, because that one always goes to what's called the relative minor. It's a nice way that the scales have a melodic way that they go from one to the other. It sounds a little bit like music. And by the way, that's an important thing in all of this, is scales should be played as if you're playing music, not just like, it doesn't sound like music because here's here's why we're doing this i'll let the cat out of the bag right now we're doing this because this is music we're practicing every piece that we're ever going to play ahead of time by knowing our scales it's going to cut down on your practice time on everything else so play them like music because they're going to turn into music and <laughs> then you'll be many many steps ahead this goes c major a minor F major, D minor, B flat major, G minor, all the way through what's called the circle of fifths. Again, if you don't know what the circle of fifths is, you're cool, don't, don't worry about it. Learn about it, but don't worry about it right now. That's pretty much the close A scales, and it just goes through that, it's a short, once you know your scales, this is a terrific way to you know just trace over your scales in the morning or in the afternoon or whenever you start practicing. It doesn't take very long, the close A has thirds and it has arpeggios, it has a bunch of other stuff that are great. They're great exercises. They're, 
not super thorough. They're not super long. There's not a, they, they're a great sort of review of everything that you might know. These are a great way to start learning the scales because it hits a lot of stuff and it doesn't take too long. But where it really shines is a way to like warm up and do everything you know how to do and touch base on it every day. And it doesn't take too long. That's where, for me, this has really shown its, its real value. Now, the Behrman, that's when we really dig in. There is two pages of scales and exercises for every C major. Isn't just... It's, it's a whole page, two pages of stuff, which is great. We're really digging in. But here's the thing about the Behrman. Mr. Behrman did not give us root to root to root. He goes full range. I would have to actually look to see exactly what they are because I use my memory, which is poor, on all of this. But let's say C major is going to sound like this. So we're going up to a high note. In this case, high F. I happen to know that one's right. And then down to low E. I think that one's right. And back up to C. I'm going to link this book in the description. You want Behrman, Third Division. It is great. Here's this one. It's a great book. And what it does is it really gives you a practice session on each, maybe a week's worth of practice sessions on, on each scale. And that is really good to dig in. And so we're practicing just one scale at a time, full range. This is giving you a very serious dose of that scale. And it's really important to learn them in this way. It's going to really make you strong. We'll talk about the exercises, the other stuff, but just do them. Yeah, yeah, they're all there. They're all written out. It's great. The next book, Gaston. I know that because he's, he's a character in uh, Ben and Holly, who my daughter watches. Uh, he's a ladybug because they're elves and fairies, and they've got a ladybug instead of a dog. It's great. In any case, uh, Gaston, Hamelin, and he wrote uh, this book of scales. It's really terrific. I mean, and the, here's the thing I like about it. This is the only scales I've ever seen in triplets. Check out what it does. Again, this is root to root. And it shifts which note is on the beat. So you play the scale three times, and then you magically end up on the root on beat one. Does it with all the scales. And the other unique feature of this particular book is that the minor scales are in their harmonic form. All the other books tend to use the melodic minor form of the scale. Uh, so this is the harmonic, right? So, so a, a minor is going to sound like this. So that goes through all of them. And then it has a great scale pattern and it, uh, that, it, that it repeats through all the different registers. It's a terrific book. And I've never, like I said, I've never seen the two things, that it's in triplets and that it is using the harmonic minor scale. So those are two things that are really, really helpful. And that book is linked in the description too. Two things to pay attention to, right? Which is what's the range and what is the rhythm, right? Because we want the emphasis to be in different places to really make us strong because when we find these scales in the wild, so to speak, in a piece, we're not going to find them going from the root to the root. We've got to find our way around them, which is completely different than just practicing from the root to the root. So we need to have them in different organizations and in different ways to challenge us in that way. And these three books are going to give us a lot of that. But here's another one that most clarinet players don't use. I'm giving you some secret sauce here. At least that was secret sauce for me. Now, this one requires a little bit of theoretical education. And you can get it as you do it. Now, this book is called Patterns for Jazz. Uh, there's two of them, so be careful. I'll link this one in the description. It's called Patterns for Jazz by Jerry Coker. And it doesn't write, it writes one of the scales down and then has you do it in all the different keys. That's pretty cool. It writes out the different patterns you're supposed to do and the, and the arrangements you're supposed to do it. Uh, I kind of just 
have a couple specific things that I've taken from this after all this time, but it really, it can give you a lot of different exercises that would take a long time to write down. And as you do it with, with your brain, which is good, good stuff. Okay. So the, the first thing that they do is they say, okay, play your major scales, play one major scale up and then go up a half step and play that major scale down. Go up a half step, play that major scale up, go up another half step on and on and on. Sounds hard. And at first it is, but you, you'll, you'll get it. Check it out. I'm going to start on E major and then, so E major on the way up, F major on the way down, F sharp major on the way up, G major on the way down, all the way through. So you get the idea. And then, instead of starting on low E, start on first space E, flip it around. So you're playing E major down, F major up. So that's great. How about this one? Same idea from the same book. We're going to go up to the ninth. So in our E major scale, the ninth is one step above the tonic, F sharp. We're going to play E up to F sharp, back down an E major scale. Then instead of landing on the tonic, we're going to land on the next chromatic step up, which will be F. And then we're going to do this for every scale. When we're playing the close scales, we're just adding a flat and then taking away a sharp. So we go to all the flats, then we have all the sharps, and we go to no sharps, and we end up back, in, back on C. That's a great way to practice scales. It's nice to add this layer of complication. So we are not going by the circle of fifths. We're not going in this harmonic pattern. We are going in a, we're going in like a chromatic pattern, which doesn't have a lot to do with tonality. What that does is it really strengthens our ability to access the scales when we need them. Even if we never end up playing them that way, we know them a lot better. The next way, the last way to practice the scales is to do it what I would call modally. Uh, if you know your theory, you know your modes. So what we do, this is ripped off from this Joe Howard book. This is what the Joe Howard book is about. I'll link that in the description too. It was written by one of my teachers also. Uh, I mean, it, it's Joe Howard's ideas realized by, uh, one of the finest client players I know, Gary Bovier, uh, in Los Angeles. He's terrific. Anyway, won't go into that too much. I could go on to it for hours. Uh, I won't right now. Here's the thing. This really allows us to, to find a new way to access a huge difference in the scales. I'm going to, you can do this up to the ninth. You can do this whatever, to whatever degree you want, root to root. This gets to be in my head. I, I'm not, I don't have the book in front of me right now, so I don't exactly know how uh, Gary wrote this out. But here's the concept. You start on C major. You play C. And then you play C Dorian. Then you play C. Phrygian. Then you play C Lydian. Then you say play C Mixolydian. And then you find some version of the minor scale to play. It's a regular standard minor scale. That way you are going through basically every scale that has this note in it, right? So your first scale is C. Your second scale is B flat, but it starts on a C. Your third scale is A flat major starting on C. The next scale is G major starting on C. The next scale is F major starting on C. 
The next scale is E flat major, but we're going to turn it into a minor scale. That would be our pure minor scale. You can turn it into a harmonic, you can turn it into melodic, you can turn it into whatever you want. <clears throat> and there you have it. Those are your scales. Ran out of air in the end. Okay, so you get the idea. That is removing the pull of the leading tone through through our scale. So it doesn't. It they space out differently. They feel they feel differently in your fingers, and that's what makes you strong in all of this. The idea of all these different exercises. And by the way, you shouldn't do all of them in one day, right? Pick your pick your times for a week. Do one way. Once you once you've learned your scales, that's the first thing. Like learn your scales. Do it. And then after you learn your scales, then you review them in certain ways. You strengthen yourselves in certain ways. And that's where this really gets fun. And it gets powerful because then when you see Weber or you see Copeland or you see Nielsen, oh, you are ready because you know the scales. You know where this came from. You can see it. And that just makes the music a lot easier to learn, to learn well, and to recall and remember. And then you are powerful. And that's where you want to be. I want you to have this power. Please take it. Please do it. Use it. And if you have a, a scale book that I didn't mention, there's another great one, the Stevenard. That actually goes to things modally, uh, tonic to tonic. It's, so that's a, a, a different mix of all of them. I'm going to link all the scale books on Amazon down here. They're my links. If you buy them, buy them here, please. And if not, buy them, use them, get strong. I'll see you next time.